Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Evening Devotions. Today, for tonight's devotional, I have a little bit of a theme. I've had two words in my mind um, all morning, and um, they are compassion and courage. So we're going to begin with a text about compassion. This is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you and forgave me as well. Well, have you ever been hurt? And I don't mean hurt like being injured from a fall or getting hit by something. Those events certainly do hurt physically, and I can almost remember most of the bicycle crashes I had as a kid, and I still have the scars to help me remember those. But I'm talking more about being hurt like emotionally, psychologically, relationally, and even spiritually. Now, I've seen dogs, cats, and fish, and other animals do some pretty terrible things to each other, um, but that's normally for food, defending territory, or whatever. But we humans, we know where and how to hurt someone where it really hurts, in the heart and in the soul. We've all been hurt because we are emotional beings and we have all dished it out to someone else as well. The better we get to know someone, the better we are at pushing their buttons. The closer we get to someone, the more vulnerable we allow ourselves to become and therefore the more prone to become the target of someone else's wrath or seriously poor choice of humor or fun. The passive aggressive attacks, those seem to be the most grievous to me. A direct cu cut or insult is easily identified and, e and therefore easier to either rectify the situation with an apology, some form of reconciliation, or stepping back in order to just diffuse the situation. Hitting back with your own insult or cutting remark just leads us all down a whirlpool of uncontrolled emotions and very little reasoning. You all know what I'm talking about and I could go on describing all the ways we hurt each other and all the ways that we've been hurt. But what I want to say in this devotional and is that the hurts that we have been impugned upon, they do not define who we are and we must learn to let them go. I know some people who, who seem to hold on to the weight of spite and anger or the desire for retribution like it was some kind of badge of honor. I know some person that will openly say, um, I will never forget the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor. Now think about it. That person has held on to that anger for a long, long time. And whenever she sees an Asian face, that anger, that bitterness would come up rumbling like an out of control volcano. And it wasn't pleasant for the people that was around her. I would say the majority of us have some kind of burden or grudge that we have chosen to bear in our heart that we either choose to bring out in order to tell people who we are like a martyr and how much we suffer, or we allow it to simmer in our heart like a glowing piece of charcoal, just ready to be thrown at somebody at the right time. I'll tell you, after so many years in ministry, I, if you decide to hold on to your grudge, anger, and hurt, it will eat you alive from the inside out. Grudges, hurt, anger, or even misdirected pride is like a cancer that slowly causes us to become deaf and blind to the beauty, joy, and love that is actually surrounding us all the time. God did not create, create us to be a trash receptacle that carries around all this negativity and hate that robs us of spending our precious time sharing and loving one another, or being amazed at the beauty that surrounds us, and even praising God for all the good things that God showers on us every day. Don't waste your precious, valuable time 
nurturing a feeling of spite and only racking up feelings of regret. The way we begin to release ourselves from this anger and hurt and shame begins with humility and compassion. If someone has hurt you, it's imperative to recognize that feeling when it comes up, <clears throat> gain control of your anger that you feel rising in your heart. And next, and this is rather difficult, you have to have compassion on the person who has hurt us. It's not easy, but we need to understand that the other person is also a person in pain. And because of their own pain and grudges that we don't even know about, that's why they might have lashed out at you. They too may be blind or deaf to their own thoughts and words. Release your anger because they may, they may not have any idea what they are doing to you and what they're doing to your relationship. Have compassion on them as God, as God has had compassion on you. Remember, every one of us is very capable and some of us very skilled at hurting someone else, but you know the inside story. Even as we have hurt other people out of our pride or our own desire to be superior to another person, even in our sinfulness, God has demonstrated the greatest compassion of all in sending to us our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then have courage, for we have been strengthened and united with God through the Holy Spirit. We're never alone, never alone. The process of letting go of anger, guilt, spite, or pride is never easy and is most likely something we cannot accomplish, accomplish on our own. And God knows that very well. Therefore, God has given us the gift of faith. Faith founded and gifted to us by the Holy Spirit. This faith gives us strength, purpose, and power to let go of everything that leads us away from the promise of God's eternal grace and mercy. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Therefore, we have courage for the Lord is with us at all times. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It wasn't an easy topic. It wasn't an easy topic to think about. But one thing I want you to remember, when we begin worship, we begin worship with confession. We confess to God that uh, we've sinned against neighbor, we've sinned against God, thought, word, and deed. But then pastor, deacon, get the best opportunity in the world, and that is to proclaim forgiveness. Use that time to let go of anger and reconcile relationships. Good night. Have a good rest.